Someone said to be blessed again with God's word. Give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. Very shortly, we'll be lifting up our voices in thanksgiving. The Bible says, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that makes merry. I will multiply them and they shall not be few. Not only that, I will glorify them and they shall not be small. And that is why we shall be lifting up our voices to give God quality thanks for the first section of this workshop. Because I know in this workshop, your own word is coming your way. Therefore, lift up your voice and let's give God, Father, thank you for making me a partaker of this first day in this second day of our 2018 International Youth Alive Convention Workshop Session. Father, thank you. You have brought me to this section because I know you are always faithful. Because I know my word is coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this time again in your presence. For this time again in your presence. For this time again in your presence. Lord, I celebrate you. Lord, I worship you. Because there is a word you have reserved for me. Jesus, I thank you. Because in Ephesians, Chapter 5 and verse 20. If it is written, give him thanks always in the name of the Lord in all things. Lord, I am here giving you thanks because I know my word will come my way. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Give Jesus a pick and complete this city. Youth alive. Youth alive. Surely we shall be rising up to pray and ask God for our personal supplication. Whatever you want God to do in your life, it is time to put it before God. Because what you don't expect, you cannot get. What you don't ask, God cannot give to you. He says, surely there's an end. But the expression of the righteous shall not be cut off. It is time to ask God for that thing you want God to do in your life in this encounter. Take any position of your choice and begin to call on God. Take any position of your choice and begin to talk to God. What is that thing that you want God to settle on this mountain? What is that miracle that you desire? What is that change that you need? It is time to talk to God. It is time to communicate with God. It is time to put your request before God. What you don't ask, you cannot get. What you don't ask, you can never get. It is time to ask God, Father, I have come to have an encounter with you for a turnaround testimony. I have come to receive my own. I have come for my settlement. I have come for my change of level. Begin to talk to God. Begin to cry on God. Jacob wrestled. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. On this mountain, Lord, it is time to visit me. It is time to settle me. I am living this place with my testimony. I have come to be settled, Lord. I have come to be established, Lord. I have come for a change of story, Lord. I have come for my testimony. In the name of Jesus, be desirous. Put your request. Put your request before God. Begin to call on God. Begin to call on God. Begin to call on God. God is here to answer you. God is here to say to you, if they ask of me anything in my name, and I will give to you. Call on me, I will answer you. I will show you greater mighty things, which you know not. It is time to call on God. It is time to call on God. Are you talking to God? Are you asking Him? Are you communicating? Are you relating your issues with Him? It is time to talk to God. God is here to say to you. God is here to answer you. God is here to visit you. It is time to receive that which belongs to you.
to you. It is time for your change of story. It is time to silence every mockers in the name of Jesus. Are you talking to God? Are you expecting? Are you desirous? What is that thing you want God to do? Your marital settlement? Your change of levels? Your change of story? Let's begin to ask God. Are you talking to God? Don't be casual about it. Don't be casual about it. It is time to ask God. It is time for your visitation. It is time for your settlement. But until you ask God, God will do nothing. You must ask Him for your settlement. You must ask Him for your settlement. Let's begin to appreciate God. Let's begin to thank Him. Because He has answered us. Let's give Him all the glory. Let's thank Him for our coming here. God will settle us. Let's appreciate Him for answer to all our prayers. This same year is our year of testimony. Let's thank Him for His faithfulness. Let's glorify His holy name. Let's give Him all the glory. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Please, with joy in our heart, let's be on our feet. Jam our hands together as we invite God's servant, the National Youth Pastor. Someone celebrate the Father. Wave your hands unto Jesus. Appreciate Him. Glorify Him. He's worthy to be praised. Celebrate Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate Him. Glorify Him some more. Thank you, faithful Father, for in Jesus mighty name we have given thanks. You would like to greet someone, one or two persons around you. Why don't you quickly do that now? Greet someone, someone very close to you. Make sure you greet someone. And I want you to please go beyond that. Know the name of the person. And uh, meet someone after this class I'll be giving us exams. You will write the name of at least three persons that you meet here today with the phone number of the person. So quickly do that. Make sure you know the person very well. At least you know the name of three. I must be able to write at least phone number of the f- one person without checking your phone. Without checking your phone. Whosoever passes that will have a gift. And I will know if the person is your friend that you already know the person's phone number. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please have your seat. You are welcome to this workshop session. We have our workshop topic is developing godly relationships. Developing godly relationships. Someone may wonder, all along we've been coming for a youth life convention, we have been doing relationship, relationship. And if you notice, this particular year, we are able to divide the class into two. We have marital breakthrough class and we have rela- uh, developing godly relationship. You know what? If you can understand godly relationship, you don't need a marital breakthrough class. <laughs> you know, if you get to that class now, we have anointing hoy there. And we have the man to. Why? To break the yoke. Perhaps someone did not take cognizance of his age or of her age. And you did not understand the seasons of life. When you meet your season, you end up being frustrated. For those of you that you have traveled out before and has to do with 
countries that are far, that you need to have a connecting flight. While booking your flight, there will be provision for the connecting flight. At times you can have five hours stopover. At times you can have three hours stopover, depending on the connecting flight. As long as you get to the airport at the right time, you are rest assured that you will get to your destination at the next time. And you will also make the connecting flight, no matter the number of hours they ask you to stop over. Praise the Lord. But when you find yourself at the airport at the wrong time, your connecting flight is not guaranteed. Godly relationship is the first flight that connects us into a marital bliss. Hear what I say? Godly relationship is the flight that connects us to what? Marital bliss. Marital bliss. Not marital breakthrough class. Yet, I'm, I, 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 I'm mindful of my words. That means attention must be paid to this class. This is where you determine how you handle life. Developing godly relationship. Amos 3.3 3 as a test for this workshop. The Bible said, can two work together except they be agreed? Can except they are in accord? Can they work together? That means there are certain set of people that we cannot work with except we agree. An agreement has to do with the person. Can two work together? So that means the person you are working with now, you have some form of agreement with the person. That's why you see in a relationship, the day you start disagreeing is the day the relationship will stop. Someone you are relating with now and disagreement sets in, then you hear we are no longer together. I want you to please be careful and follow me through. There are what to do. In order for our relationship to be continued and have the best of life. May I say at this junction that not all married men and married women are enjoying. Some are enduring. A lot of people are enduring. There's a particular woman that she's always touchy. She doesn't have good relationship with people. And someone noted recently that, Sir, you may not know why this woman is like this. That maybe she's not having a good home. I once confronted a woman in my office then. She happens to be our head of operation in the back then. Anytime she comes, she's fighting everybody. The day she was celebrating her 40th birthday, I was privileged to be there. That was the day I met her husband. Then I came to a conclusion why she was fighting everybody in the office. <laughs> if your own is not right, your life will not be right. And may I say this at this point, that God is a good God. There is nothing that you will find yourself into tomorrow that you will not see today. 
Most of us, you know, just talking about that Amos three three, that can two work together except they agree. As you are walking, you must be seen. As you are walking, you are what? As you are walking, you must be seen. A lot of people talk about I fall in love. Oh, I fall in love with that brother. Ah, I fall in love with that sister. The same way you fell in love is the way you must rise. If not, you will never rise again. You don't fall in love, you walk into love. You don't fall in love, you do what? You walk in love. I want the audience today to begin to understand the power of the tongue. When you fall, you can't rise in the relationship. When it comes to love, because you have said, I, I fall, I fell in love, I fell. Since you are falling, you cannot rise. <laughs> because the love that you fell into cannot make you to rise. And what do you do when you, when you find yourself in falling in that kind of love? You find yourself falling on the bed. You find yourself what? Falling on the bed. And once your relationship gets to a falling, that can never be a rising. As I'm speaking to you now, preparing your mind to where we are going, begin to examine yourself. The searchlight of heaven is beaming on you now. You know, we are here today, we are not condemning anyone but we are calling ourselves unto a godly repentance. You cannot play with the devil and escape his danger. If you marry or you are dating the daughter of Satan and you finally marry the daughter of Satan, then you have a Satan as your father-in-law. Then he has the right to visit your home. And that cannot, it might be occasionally, it can be frequently, depending on the love Satan has for his daughter. I will repeat that. If you marry the daughter of Satan, you have given Satan the license to visit your home, whether occasionally, intermittently, frequently, regularly, Casually, depending on the level of intimacy and love that exists between the father and the daughter. I'm not scaring you. I'm saying this now for you to know the importance. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation is key. I want to congratulate everyone in this class because... A lot of you have not seen uh, disappointment. I, I might be wrong. <clears throat> but you will never see disappointment again. Amen. What that means is you are not married yet. I congratulate you. You know why? I had a word from the Lord 2007. That anyone that is not born again should not marry. Hear that one very well. If you are not born again, never step into a relationship. Jacob tried it. Jacob, in the night, they brought a wrong wife for Jacob. In the night. Night connotes darkness. When we have not, yet, when we have not known the Lord. But in the morning, he woke up. And their life has married a wrong wife. So when you wake up, that life talks about the morning. The morning of when you are now born again. The light dawns on you. So you can never have the right relationship without having a right standing with God. The author of all relationship is God. Who is the author of relationship? God is the author of relationship. God is the, we must have this understanding at the back of our mind. 
Because spiritual understanding is what determines the quality of our lives and relationship. Psalm 119 verse 144. Psalm 119 verse 144. said, give me understanding that I may live. So our living is determined by our level of understanding. A man cannot live an understanding life without having an understanding. Your relationship cannot be said to be outstanding if you lack understanding. We must have understanding of spiritual. We must have this spiritual understanding. Not all eyes that opens that sees. There, are, there is this kind of inner eyes that you... Suddenly, I came to a realization that a right man can be perceived. And the right one can be passive. I don't know about you, but God has given me that understanding. If I see a lady that is the right lady, I know her. <laughs> if I see a wrong lady, I know. If I see a man that is going somewhere, I know. We must have this spiritual understanding that will enlighten our understanding, eyes of understanding. Paul was praying in Ephesians 3, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. That the eyes of our understanding, that is eyes of understanding. So we must have these eyes of understanding before we step into any relationship. Still talking about godly relationship, how to develop godly relationship by way of introduction. We must understand now that we are Products of the choices we make. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. The law. I've never seen this kind of examiner before. God said, I lay before you life and death. <laughs> I lay before you life and death. But God said, choose life that you may live. God was giving us option. He was still giving us solution. Which jump question have you seen in life? That they ask you question and provide answer. But our God asked question and also provided answer. Praise the Lord. Because He knows that people will still make mistakes. Where you are now is as a result of the choice that you made yesterday. The choice that you will make today again we determine where you'll be tomorrow. So we must understand that we are products of choices. We must also understand that we'll be accountable for the actions and the deeds in our relationship. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. I want us to please read. Someone... All our sisters, please, read Romans 14, verse 12. Are you all there? Some of us, we don't have Bible, but we have good air do. Your makeup is expensive. Your Bible is tearing. <laughs> you are not having goodly, godly relationship with your God. <laughs> you are having... A good makeup, you don't have a Bible. I will advise you, the money for your makeup tomorrow, go and use it to buy a Bible. I will not expect someone that doesn't have a Bible that is wearing a good dress. Someone should read for us, Romans 14 verse 12. Now, all the sisters, are we all there? One, two, go. Who are you going to give your account of yourself to? Ha! Ah, someone may wonder why they ask the sister alone to read it. You can stop that brother direction is determining his direction. When you know that you will give account, remember that your body is not your own. 
is the temple of the Lord. You will give account. So, you must understand that biblical character is of essence in maintaining a right relationship. You must have this character that I, and this understanding that I will give account. When I know that I will give account of every action, then I will be careful of who I work with. I will give account, then I will be so detailed in knowing who I will relate with. Someone may say, no, I just want to make friends with this person. I have been there before. This kind of love, infatuation, infatuation, you might not know when you will fall into it. Relating together with someone that you don't, you know, that is not your time or your time is dangerous. Because there is this time that comes that before you know you begin to feel for him. You begin to feel for her. You must understand that you will give account for every action. Be careful of how you relate with people. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end is what? Proverbs 16 verse 25. There is a way. There is a way that seems right. There is a way that seems right. The way that way seems right, it looks that this relationship is good. You know, we are mentioning relationship. But we are saying godly relationship. We have all manner of relationship. Relationship is relating. And as you are relating, you must be able to understand who do I relate with? That's the way that seems right to a man. But the end is destruction. Proverbs 21, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. So the man that wanders away from the way of knowledge will abide in the congregation of the dead. All the brothers, please read that. Proverbs 21, verse 16. Proverbs 21, verse 16. Don't be afraid to read it. <laughs> oh brothers, don't be afraid to. I said, don't be afraid to. And I want to go. Are we all there? If you are there, say yes. If you are not there, say wait for me. I won't wait for you. You, you are there. You don't want to read it. <laughs> and I want to go. We we'll remain where? Okay, can we say it this way? A man that refused to go to school, or a man that the admission has been given to, and school fees has been paid, but refused to attend lectures, will remain the congregation of the dead? Is that what? No. Read it again. Understanding, not going to school. And wonders, wonders away. That means, he did not know. Gradually by gradually. Wandering away, away. That means he was dead. Talking this, this particular scripture is talking about the saints in the kingdom. As a matter of fact, I perceive. Solomon wrote it 
when he started feeling he was backsliding. Or realizing the consequences of his action. But it was too late for him. In the time we fail us, I will have given us a download of the relationship that crashed the empire of Solomon. Solomon had the privilege to hear from God after he made a, uh, a sacrifice. <laughs> At another second time, Solomon still asked from God. Before the second time that Solomon, uh, Solomon asked from God, the Bible made us to understand that Solomon's company is a made affinity with the king of Egypt. He made friendship with the king of Egypt. And king of Egypt, will not, you, you cannot complain or make friendship with the king of Egypt without giving you a wife. <laughs> and so, the king of Egypt gave Solomon a, uh, his daughter as a wife to Solomon. And you know, Solomon will go to the temple and worship. Suddenly, she said to Solomon, in, 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 in Egypt, they have Milo. Milo is the idol that they worship. I can't be following you to church. Kindly build me Milo. And Solomon that built the temple also built Milo. And when God came, God spoke to him, I will be with you. The throne will not be cut off. Only if you walk well. And you don't worship another God. At that time, he was not worshipping another God. He will only build another God for his wife. So, he wandered away. He wandered away. He was there in the kingdom. But he wandered. Save me from today. Father, help me not to wander away. From instruction. From understanding. Amen. So Father. Grant me. Right. Understanding. Grant me Lord. Good. Understanding. Understanding is fine. But there is good understanding. You see. We have a lot. God someone said at the time it. Received the mandate. He was not the only one that received the mandate. A lot of pastors who at that time. But someone had a good understanding. In starting the ministry. <laughs> and that is why we are here today. The church that started with three and a half persons. Three and a half. They called the last person half. Because it will come today. Another one month will not come. So it was the half. <laughs> They see where we are today. Because it took time to have good understanding. Say with me, Father, concerning my relationship, give unto me good understanding. I receive the law in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Why do we stretch that? We stretch that because understanding is at the root of all outstanding accomplishments. How well your relationship will do will be determined by the understanding you have. You know what? Even if you find yourself in a wrong relationship, in an ungodly relationship, what happens? You will walk your way out because you have understanding. Now, can I ask this question? How do I identify godly relationship? I'm asking a question now. How do I understand or identify a godly relationship? I want someone to please tell me. God bless you, my brother. Okay. Can you speak from there and we'll hear here? You need microphone. <laughs> a godly relationship is that relationship that practices and speaks godly principles. Hallelujah. 
Godly relationship is that relationship that does what? Exhibit or practice biblical principles. Exhibit and practice biblical principles. Do you agree with him? Do you agree with him? Someone said no, come. Godly relationship is the relationship that practice. Godly and biblical principles that practice it. Now speak to us. Well, thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. First of all, when you say godly relationship, how do you understand that you are in a relationship with someone and everything is following in the details of the word of God doesn't mean it's godly. First of all, for the relationship to be godly, God has to lead you into the relationship. Because at the beginning, it wasn't much either for him to have a wife. And God said, it is not good that a man should be alone. It was God's initiative, idea, philosophy, and thought to give the man a wife. So, relationship is 100% thing and not a personal career decision. So, God has to initiate the idea for you. Hey, boy, this is the right time for you. Hey, my daughter, this is the right man. That is the reason the Bible says, if you find a wife, you find good things. Now, you have to, first of all, find what God wants to find before the blessings that are sorted with it would be become your part and part of you. So, Godly relationship is a relationship that is divinely orchestrated from heaven and released to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Someone else have a point? You want to have to eat? Praise God. You can identify it through the fruits the person bears. Praise the Lord. You can do what? Identify through the fruit that the person bears. Now, they say they all spoke well. The question was, how do I identify? You know? How do I identify? They all spoken well about godly relationship. They told us about godly relationship. Not how do we identify. And identification talks about, about what? About the knowing. If you don't know, how do, for instance now, you don't know that this is a suit. If I show you, will you say it's a suit? Knowing, you must come to understanding. <laughs> you must first know. What you don't know, for instance, if you don't know your bus stop, Everywhere we look like where you are going. That means you meet this brother. Oh, this is my man. Oh, God, thank you. As that my brother said, as God orchestrated by God. Oh, this one is orchestrated by God. <laughs> Another one. Oh, this fine brother. Oh, you come. Don't cheat me. <laughs> Everywhere you go will look like where you are going. We must have this knowing. And thank God, it is this knowing, this knowledge that we want to learn here. Praise the Lord. If we don't know, we will wonder. We will wonder away. As a matter of fact, if you stay in a relationship, You are meeting someone. How do you even start a relationship? You must first understand that. I did something now. I initiated a relationship now. When I got here, I told you, meet someone. What do you do? You did relate. You related that time. How do you relate? You met the person. How are you? For some, that singular act, that drama that took place has not left someone's mind. As I'm talking now, you're already planning let that pass off in it. If he follows like that, I'll follow her. If he goes like this, ah, you are monitoring now, God, for, 
God will help you. She's an usher. She stood up from here to go and come. You are thinking, ah, she's, uh, is she going? Ah, will, ah, where is this? Where is she living now? She's not living. She's counting. So I did initiated a move. That move can lead to someone or some group of people getting married at last. I'm telling you, it's not prayer. What I did by just meet one or two persons can lead to someone destruction tomorrow. I'm telling you. <laughs> Can lead to introduction of what you have never known before. Can be the beginning of the fall. Can be the beginning of the destruction of the spiritual life. It can be the beginning of the lifting that you have never known before. Can be the beginning of the blessing that God has planned for you. By meeting the person. Some people pray, oh God, why did you allow me to meet him? Why do you allow me to miss her? By the reason of the wrong impact. We must understand that every day we are initiating a relationship. As we are going at the bus, I say, "Hi, hey, let me tell you something. One day, for my place, I went to bank to go and do one or two things in my station. As I was from, I didn't go with her because we went that for outreach. So I stopped, the bus left, I went to the bank to do one. When I was coming back to enter the bus, the bus stopped, a lady in front of that bus greeted me. People greet me before, I used to say, where did I know you? But I just as you, it's winners. So I greeted her. We ended up because I was new at that place. She told me how I would get a bus to my next location. Immediately she came down. I mean, we came down at that same bus stop for me to join the next one. When I turned back, I saw. I turned back and she turned. I saw the way she looked. I knew immediately, I know. This is an initiation into a wrong relationship. You see, you must understand. I knew. Immediately I turned. You know, there's a way you look that shows what you are looking for. You see, don't deceive yourself. You know these things. It's only that you love. Is there no one? Is it the one that is tempted? Is that you are, uh, don't say you are being tempted with what is more than you. You are, no one is being tempted by what is more than. So, what I'm saying here today is at every point that you meet someone, as I say meet someone, someone has come to meet you. You know, you will save some people's phone number. There are some you will not save. There are some that when you save and they call you, you will respond. There are some you will save and put name danger. So they do, anytime you see, you know, I won't pick this call because it's danger. But because pastor said, relate and collect the phone number. You know what people even do? They will put, if the number ends by eight, they will call the number for you and put eight at the back. It ends by three, but they put eight in case, so that you enter another, and you know, putting eight to the place three, that same phone can, can ring in Kano. Boko Haram can pick it. <laughs> <laughs> so as we meet here today and we depart here today we are still coming tomorrow friendship relationship is a choice it's not by force someone is working for fine there is a place of being polite because the person that you are rude to today can also be beneficial to you tomorrow that is why the game of relationship must be mastered. There is an art of relationship. And we must master the heart. 
I want to, by this junction, practicalize something for us. And I want to start a relationship. And I will call one sister. Hello, my sister. Hello, my I want to meet this sister. Now, before meeting her, talking about understanding, I have the understanding that I am done with schooling, or I am in school, and I have seen a potential in this person. And I believe that if we pray through together and walk through, we can live together. Now, for instance, if I'm still in under level, I'm looking for admission. And I am chasing after a sister. What kind of priority will you call that? What? Major? The Lord bless you. What about the sister that's looking for admission? That a brother is asking out and she's saying yes. What do you call that priority? Huh? Can we say misplaced priority? Can we say out of order? Someone say lack of focus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, hear this. Hello. We read a scripture. There is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end there is with what? Now going back to spiritual understanding. When you know the law, you know the timing. There are set of people, they call them the children of Issachar. The Bible said they know, they have the understanding of the time and seasons of life. They know what Israel ought to do per time. As a matter of fact, they were not much, but they were the ruler. They were not much. That means people that have the understanding of, hold on. Don't go here. I'm, I'm, I'm marketing you. <laughs> I'm exposing you for, to blessing. <laughs> Praise God. Maybe I'll pick different sisters. I'm sampling them. Uh, it's promotion. Praise God. Now, those that have the understanding of timing in this side, they are not much. That's why you see a lot of trials and hero. Now I ask a question. Someone that is looking for admission and a brother is this now, someone says lack of focus. If you have the understanding of timing and a person comes to you, be polite to the person. Greet the person. Go back to your house and pray to God. The Lord God Almighty has the plan for every man. You can never have a good relationship, I will say again, without having a good God. That means without having a relationship with God, no relationship can you have that will stand. When you know God and you have the understanding of timing, you know when this person comes to you, you know why the person has come. Let's clap for her. What's your name? Gift. Gift. What's her name? <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful name. Someone would like to take gift. You go with gift. I'm asking you gift. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> now, quickly. Steps to godly relationship. Steps to godly relationship. As we write down steps to godly relationship, let me quickly share this with you as we begin to round up. Anytime when I meet 
a, a person. You see, there is this desire in all. It's not anybody that is appealing to you. That is it. Don't don't deceive yourself. There are some people that when you see that you won't, it's not that they are not beautiful. They are not just they are not your type. You see that thing in you is talking to you. Listen to it. You see, you just see some people, you just flow, you just like their look. It's not that the person is beautiful or something spectacular. You just you cannot just tell. There are some things that you don't have divination for. You cannot just tell, but you just feel, you know, that connection. Now, listen to that inner voice. It is called inner prompting. At that time, take care. You see, what I'm saying now might not make sense to some people. Especially if you are not on this side. <laughs> you know, to those that are on the other side, any, anything goes. Yellow today, green tomorrow. Brown after, yellow, up and down, <laughs> low and high, fat and thin. Oh. I will pray, Father, we she, what has she come through? You know what? You meet people for different purposes. As you are met now, you know someone has an influence. That can affect you and give you a job tomorrow. By properly detailing. You see. Try and take time to detail. And analyze the relationship. The person you are meeting. Take time to know. If you are meeting casually now. You can also ask in another time you are meeting. Take time to ask few questions. Know each other more. But before the second time. There must be a praying. Before you made the person the second time, you must have prayed. If not, you will fall. You just like the person. That second liking is not, is the wrong like. It's a uh, frustration. You don't want to be lonely. Some people, they fall in love because they don't want to be lonely. I want a complaint. I want a complaint. So I ask the father, father, who is she? This person I'm meeting now, why am I meeting this person? Because we have people that we meet that might just be for you to do business together. Does that mean you should marry the person? You're on campus, for instance, you must understand that 75% of relationship on campus, they end on campus. I'm telling you, after the brother goes back to go and serve, he sees another yellow girl. He comes back after service, he sees another person. You see, your brain, your mentality on campus will be different from your mentality while you are serving, will be different from your mentality while you are working. I'm telling you, that three phase, that's why you must understand the seasons of life. If you have not yet mature, don't send me to a relationship. At best, have relationship that is mature, that you can learn from. How do you do that? By finding individuals that have gone ahead of you and relate with them. And at that point, I say caution. At that point, I say what? Caution. Why do I say caution? A lot, you see, we're supposed to have mentors. People that we go, for instance, you don't know much about relationship. But you see, people that are successful in relationship, you go to them and work with them and learn. But at times, the person that is coming to learn, they are now, before you know it, something else has happened. And that is why maturity comes in. By the time you, are, you see, you are sensing a foul play, you must begin to run. Praise the Lord. Steps to godly relationship. Number one, avoid corrupt communication. Avoid corrupt communication. First Corinthians fifteen thirty three. Avoid corrupt communication. What you say will determine where you go. 
What you say, how you chat will determine where you end. For instance, the person you have met now has already sent this message to you. You started chatting on, as I'm talking to you now, you are chatting. You know yourself, you are chatting. You are already responding to him. Okay, also you are on Facebook. Oh, how are you? Okay, I, I, I've added you on my WhatsApp. So you say yes. Ah, yes. Oh, how are you? And you now, I, I know you. Where is that? You did like this. No, that's power. <laughs> and you did like this. Right. <laughs> so, the person that you just collected his number now, our number, you have already started chatting with him or her on, uh, on WhatsApp. And now the next thing is the picture. The picture that has been sent. Evil corruption. I mean, evil communication corrupts good man. Please, I say this today, be careful of what you chat, who you chat with. When you are chatting, people are free to chat. You know, you are not seeing. There are things that you can say. There are things that you cannot say when you are facing someone. But when you are chatting, you can say it. I'm telling you the truth. Immediately you are chatting with someone and it's becoming a sex chat, run away. Run away. Evil communication corrupts good manner. So be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. The communication will land you into where you don't want to go. The next to that is sit and complain with the doers of the world. Sit and complain with the doers of the world. Sit and complain. Complain with the doers of the world. Sit and complain with the doers of the world. Proverbs 13 verse 20. Proverbs 13 verse 20. He that walks with the wise shall be what? By the companions of the fool. Shall be what? Hear this. He that walks with the wise. What would the Bible say he will do? But why is it that the company of the fool will not be fool? Hello? Have you ever wondered that scripture? He that walks with the wise shall be what? It's the same language. But he that walks <laughs> the companion of the fool shall be what? Why did they change the language from fool to being destroyed? You need to watch it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He that walks with the wise shall be wise. Companion of the fool shall be you will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. You will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. The next to that is renew your mind. Constantly renew your mind. Renew your mind. Romans 12 verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. I want everyone to read it. Romans 12, verse 2. Quickly open as we round up. Romans 12, verse 2. Are we there? You are there say yes. Want to go. How are you being transformed? How are you being transformed? How are you being transformed? Quickly, let us see wonders of God relationship. Wonders of God relationship as we round off finally. Wonders of God relationship number one. It is for better living. Say for better living. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, said two are better than one. Two are better than one. Not only for marriage, but when you have a friend, you can relate with your understanding. You want to make decisions, you relate with the person. Two are better than one. So it's for better living. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. For better living. Then the next to that, wonders of God relationship is designed for life of impact. 
It's a life of impact. Deuteronomy 32 verse 30. I want us to read that as a final scripture. Deuteronomy 30. Quickly open. Some of us, we don't know where Deuteronomy is. Because you are checking New Testament. If <laughs> this only thirty, this only thirty, about thirty-two verse thirty. Are we there? Are we there? One, two, go. Read it like a soldier. Okay, stand up, stand up and read it. One, two, go. Praise the Lord. Now, how many of us know mathematics? <laughs> what we do what? How many we want to chase? So, how many should Two chase. Abba, uh, you are, you are, you are, you are, <laughs> I asked a question. Do you know mathematics? I said yes. One will chase a thousand. How many should two chase? Uh, that, who is saying ten thousand? It shows the kind of certificate that you have. <laughs> is it kindergarten or you are, or you are doing part time and you are going once in a while? <laughs> One will chase a thousand. Two will chase two, two thousand. But because we are talking about God relationship, he said, we did not chase ten thousand. Did the Bible say they will chase ten thousand? What will they do to ten thousand? Uh, what will they do with the ten thousand? You see, that's unusual synergy. That's powerful. Two, we chase, they will put 10,000 to flight. Chasing talks about pursuing and running. Flight talks about flying. <laughs> Two, we put 10,000 to flight on usual speed. That is why we must have understanding and be conscious when we are stepping into relationship. Relationship can either marry you or make you. It can never leave you the same. God in relationship will always turn your mathematics into a foolishness. Mathematics, one, one thousand, two, two thousand. But he said, when it is godly, you will not even take ten thousand. You put ten thousand to fly. Now, on the promise of that, I want you to please stretch for your hands towards heaven as a father. Give me wisdom to pursue understanding. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Give me wisdom to pursue after wisdom, understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying. You see, when I had understanding of this, I prayed, Father, may I not miss it maritally. May I not miss it. Because when you marry your wife, you will gain speed in life. When you find yourself in the right relationship, everything will be right about you. I'm telling you the truth. When I got married, the same salary I was earning, that I was unable to save. The first year of our marriage, I was able to save money. By the second year, God has already given us a land. By the third year, a building was standing. And another one joined it. They talk about speed. Because two, we put 10,000 
to fly. I want you to please strap forth your hands towards this platform. Using this altar, representing the grace that is working in this commission. We can see the relationship of our father and his wife. How God has made the family to experience unusual flights. Lord, grant me the patience, the understanding, the order of grace that made this to be a reality. Lord, I covet it. I covet it. Someone covet it. Someone covet it. Convert it. It's available. It's releasable. It's realizable. Convert it now. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You receive your desires in the name of Jesus. Because our fathers, they are not failing in marriage. You will not fail. It will not be bad for you that they will be praying for breakthrough for you. At the right time, you will be stepping into right places. The time you are supposed to be married, you will not be delayed. The man that will date you for five years and dump you will not come your way. The sister that, will, that you will send to school four years of rigorous hard labor to pay her school fees and pay her NYC mobilization only for her to return and show you photocopy of the certificate and say thank you for sending me. I think I've seen one yellow man that is working in bank. I am sorry you are not knowledgeable. I am sorry you are not educated. So please, sir, no, that kind of sister will not come your way. In the name of Jesus. Ah, robbers. Robbers. Robbers of the body. Robbers, robbers of the money. Robbers of destiny. They will not meet you. Those that will rob you and dump you, they won't find you. You will not labor in vain. In the name of Jesus. The relationship will be right. It will be godly. It will see the light of the day. How many of you will want to just be wasting time? I am just dating him to date sake. For dating sake. I am just dating her for dating sake. No! No one of you want to put money in the bank for just putting for sale. You are putting it, you are investing. Some of you, you are calling that brother every day. You are wasting credit. You are, you are, you are, sorry, you are investing credit. After so many, so many years, you will, not, you will not say he's not doing it again. No! You will never labor in vain again. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow, same time. Now, we are moving now to go and pray. Hour of recovery. We have not prayed here. We are going to pray there. In order for your relationship to be to be what? To be right. Pray well and your life will be well. You are blessed. Together surely. God's grace and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall be in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace.